Hi, it's Renee from Create Your Own Story by Renee Christine. I thought that I would do a flip through of my personal journals and also um, give you an idea of the difference between a traveler's notebook, a junk journal, an art journal, because I was at a show recently, I showed somebody a junk journal, he looked through it and he goes, okay, this is great and it's really pretty, but what's it for? So, and I had three different kinds of journals on my table and some people had never heard of traveler's notebooks or junk journals or art journals. So, um, needless to say, uh, the art journals are what they ended up buying because they didn't know about junk journals. Uh, some people call these heirloom journals and some people call them just handmade journals. So what I'm going to do is share with you what I've done this year uh, and kind of go over what's what, uh, show you some pictures, give you some ideas. I'm going to start out with my art journals first because those are my favorites for what I like to do in my free time, which is never um so i'm gonna start out with this one and let's see i'm gonna go right here and i'm gonna put this one up here and this is a art journal that it was a watercolor book that i decorated the cover on and um i use stenciling and texture paste to decorate the cover this is my art journal that i've been working on this year there's some blank spots in it, but I'll just do a quick flip through so I can share this with you and give you an idea of uh, the difference between them. So this is uh, one I did earlier in the year. I think this is the first one I did last year or this year. Um, I just like to collage and do some stamping, put some pictures in there. I'll take, if I see a cool picture like this off of a junk mail or something I get, in the mail. I'll incorporate it somehow into my uh, art journal. Art journals can be made with anything. You can do all watercolor, acrylic. I wouldn't suggest oils unless you have about 10 books going um, because of the drying time. Um, sprays, texture, stamping. It can be used as a scrapbook. I like to do a mix of everything. Um, and what I'll do is when I have, when I do one page, like this page, I had this uh, Mandela and I stamped it on the other page so hopefully I'll get back to that page and do something with that. Um, I'm just going to move this over here. So um, yeah, so I'll just keep going through. Merry Christmas everybody. This was last year's but Merry Christmas. It works for this year, this time of year. Um, I just go, some of these are challenges, some of them are prompts by other art journalers. Uh, I'll try to name them as I go through because there's some awesome people out there who do awesome work and they can get you motivated and give you ideas. Um, this was just some stuff out of a magazine and some collage of papers. I just thought she had pretty eyes, so I made a collage of your eye doctor visit. Um, my granddaughter always says be beautiful, so I made a little journal out of a couple or a page out of some beautiful things. Here's a mixture of texture paste, napkin collaging, and um, uh, sprays that I did. I have a couple blank pages left in this. Uh, this one over here was a prompt by Marami Small Art and Marta is really good about uh, giving you prompts and ideas for art journaling. She does a, not a challenge, but a, like a weekly idea post, sometimes bi-weekly. Um, and I think this year she's on week 18. So maybe they're every three weeks. Doesn't matter. I enjoy doing it. Uh, but check out Marami Small Art. This is another page I did. Um, this door is made out of pieces of cardboard. So she taught us how to do that. Again, a blank page. Here's one I did on my own. I just love the colors. Some more blue is my favorite color, so I try to mix up what I'm doing, but 
Um, Marta also taught how to do these circles to make them realistic and look like they pop off the page. Uh, same with these. I think my circles were getting a lot better. Um, but the rest of it was just stuff that I did. Again, this is my art journal. Uh, here's some more pages that I did. This is one that I'm working on where I used stencils somewhere else. I put the um, stuff on here and I'll keep adding on to this as I get back to it. Uh, one thing I use art journaling for also is um, to get things out. You know, this was something I had to get out, out of my system. I saw this girl standing here on a chair and I added the circle and it said no more expectations in it, which was perfect. And um, it went with what this was all about. I got it out of my system and I moved forward. Here's one I did that uh, was a prompt by Marta. Uh, here's a page that I'm working on. I got this in junk mail. Uh, kind of what I like to do is I try to recycle as much of my junk mail as I can. I will use junk mail and junk journals. I think that's why they're called junk journals. Um, but I will also incorporate them into my art journaling. Uh, I can't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this bear. I'll probably, I don't know what I'm going to do, but that's like a work in progress. Uh, here's one that was done. It was not, kind of a dark day, but um, I got it out of my system again. Um, I keep saying I get it out of my system, but I don't. Uh, this one, here's an example of my drawing skills. I cannot draw to save my life. But this was a uh, prompt using different shades of black and gray. And uh, I just went with it. I just drew some flowers and I used uh, wax pencils and watercolors and just went with it. Um, but yeah, my drawing skills are not that great. I will use a lot of stencils when I am trying to draw or I will do decoupage of napkins, which is what this is on this page. Um, and there's some, there's layers here. This is a mixed media page. This is one I'm working on. I just stamped off what I was not using. I have some extra blast black gesso on this page. This page I'm not real, I'm not a real fan of because the prompt was to use a, a brown background. And I just think that's too dark for me. So I don't think I'll do that one again, but it was fun to do and try something different. Uh, some more that I have been setting up. This one I like. I love the mixture of brown and turquoise. So that's that page. But uh, I take washi tape, cutouts out of uh, cutouts I have, um, stamping. Here's another two pages I made. Um... This one was not a prompt, it was just something I did. My granddaughter, she writes in my art journals, which I absolutely love because I have a constant reminder. My older granddaughter. And then this is a page I did for a combination of my two granddaughters. And then this was another fun page. The prompt with uh, Mirami Small Arts was you first did one page where you uh, drew something. And I this was a whole page over here. And then like one week it was blues and butterflies. And then the next page was cutting your partial page or making a partial page. And what I did was I cut off my existing page, added a little bit to it, and then put some colors in the front here. It was supposed to be purple. So the purple just happened to blend in with this one. I added the blue on later, did some stamping. But that's my art journal, my big art journal that I was working on this year. My other art journal I will also use. I try to set them up with different artists that I'm following or learning from and um, <laughs> some people think this is gross but I think this is really beautiful there's a butterfly my husband found in the yard and uh, I actually did I scanned the wings and um, I put the actual butterfly in here here's another art journal prompt I did this was a prompt with uh, France Francis Papillon I don't know how to say her last name but she calls uh, her group, her little butterflies. And this was a prompt from her. Uh, another example of a journal page in here was this one. Um, just did a little watercolors here, some texture paste and some sprays, some mica sprays here. Another one with uh, this was 
watercolors with some um, cotton balls to make it look like clouds. I added a piece of styrofoam from a packing package that I got and more butterflies and hearts from different pieces of paper. And I, this is mixed media as well. I glued on some pieces for texture. I like to feel things. I'll mix fabric and, sorry about that. I will mix fabric and other things for my journals. Uh, and this is my last page I did in this journal. I only have like three pages in this journal so far. So um, that's my second art journal. And then my last journal is this one. This is also an art journal. I did this with, uh, this was just something I did on my own. This is my extent of sketching and drawing landscapes. I'm, like I said, not something I, not something I can do, but, uh, this was something I found. I cut it out and I tried to imitate that sort of in this. It's a work in progress. Here's another one. Uh, I think France Papillon was the one on that one, uh, that did that prompt. Uh, talking about layering and things like that. Uh, this was just something, some colors I sprayed down and put together. Uh, this was Wendy Brightville. She had a free class, gave a lot of ideas on different things to do in your art journals. I love these colors. I never would have thought about this, but um, she said take an item, which in my case it was poppies in this washi tape. And I drew a poppy here, which that doesn't look like a poppy because I never colored it in. But uh, I try to use some of these similar colors over here and then do some squigglies and it turned out kind of cool. Uh, this is one I did on my own, just a collage with some vintage uh, items from a book. Uh, this is something different. Again, junk mail. Uh, this was an envelope that came. You guys probably get them, uh, some pre-approved credit card and they have cool looking envelopes all the time. So I stuck them in there. Here's some uh, drawing, some stenciling, and then I just kind of put these up there for added added texture. Uh, this is one that I did. Reach for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. Uh, I really believe keep reaching for what makes you happy. Um, one thing I will say about this, I don't know if you can see this, but it's got a, a shiny sheen on it. Uh, this, I use gel medium for this to protect it, and it ended up making my pages stick together a little bit, so I wouldn't do that on one of your journals. Um, this is more Wendy Brightbill. Here's another one that I did. A little bit of the Starry Night theme, kind of going through it. This is more Wendy Brightbill, and these are just some of the things I did. Here's an example of where I put fabric in, put some wording on it, and then stamped it. And then I have one more page in this little mini journal. This will be. This is a journal that I can carry with me. Um, I've got my. I did a little bit of collage on the front, and there's a picture of my grandma on the back. I love having her with me. Okay, so those are my art journals. And the next example I want to show you is my only junk journal that I've made for myself. This one is my gardening junk journal. I, and this is actually an altered book, which is a form of a junk journal, and I'll explain the difference. An altered book is a book where you have the existing book, you take some of the pages out, not all of them, and you incorporate those pages into what you're using. And that way you don't have to worry about sewing in a spine and that kind of thing. But uh, this is a vintage Reader's Digest gardening book. I put some fabric, collage, some paper, flower on the front. I just loved this book. I didn't want to take all these pages out and I thought these prints were really cool. So I'll just do a little bit of a flip through this. I kept all the pages in the book that had flowers. I figured why would I take these out when they're beautiful to look at. And uh, this is great for this time of year because there are no flowers. But uh, I left those in and then I added some journaling spots in here. And I also added some grid paper so I could plan my garden. This is actually a working book for my gardening. Um, and I used it this year and then I'll probably continue to add papers for next year. I only did those for this year. Uh, I just saw some of the pages so if I want to journal on top, make notes, I can. This paper came from Graphics Fairy and I make seed packets for my seeds and I'll put them in here from my garden and I'll just be able to use these next year and I don't have to buy seeds. 
That's a picture of my grandma. I collaged some paper on top of the existing pages. Put in a little um, writing card here. This is a tuck spot to hold things. This is uh, my hibiscus seeds. I have some journal cards. And I kind of did that throughout the book. I put some papers in that were garden appropriate. And uh, here's some more of my seed packets I made. I just did a circle punch, folded these like an envelope. And I will use these next year uh, for next year's garden. Another uh, tuck spot. Here's some tags that I made out of seed packets that I did use this year. Again, look at look at these drawings. I mean, they're pretty cool. And I left those in. I left those pages in the book. So um, there's a lot of drawings like that in here. You can see where I have put some more pockets, some little frames in here. But this is just an example of the things I like to have in my junk journal. And I actually left some of the articles that I thought I'd be using. There's some pages in here about ponds, um, how to build one, that kind of thing. I've built one before, but it never hurts to have a you know reminder on how to do it. Here's some fabric that I had that I'm going to somehow incorporate. A uh, photo page, journaling pages, um, another flower. I drew that on there because that paper kind of looked like a beehive. Um, so I'm going to add this in. So I just put things in here. And then when I get some free time for myself, I will journal in here. And I made one for me. This was my first one, my trial run. And then I made another one that is in my Etsy store. Uh, and the one thing I do with these books, too, is I will keep the back part of the book in here. So uh, it's got all the instructions about your gardening. Um... Actually, I didn't do it on this one. But, uh, oh no, it's got, there's information here throughout the book about uh, weeds and pests. And the other book that I did, um, there's a whole back section about taking care of your garden. And I left that in that other book. But that's, that was kind of a cool book. I did not want to destroy it. But this is an altered book. Now, the difference between an altered book, junk journal, and a junk journal completely made from scratch. And this is a new one. This is a new one that has not been used yet. Whoops. And uh, this one is made to be like a family heirloom book. I made a little tassel. This is also available in my Etsy store. I what I did what a what a uh, junk journal or heirloom journal is is you can either make new covers, cut, start completely from scratch, take some chipboard or wood and make new covers and you can, you know, create your own book to be as thick or thin as you want. Or in my case, I take vintage Reader's Digest books because they seem to be the perfect size and I will take all the pages out from the inside of the book, set them aside and I'll use them for different things like those seed packets in the other book over here. But uh, then people will take their papers that they've made and put together and they'll bind them back into the binding of the book. They'll hand sew them back in. And this way you can create your own kind of papers. You're saving the book pages for other projects uh, and reusing your book, but you're not getting rid of the book completely. It just, and it may not all be incorporated back into this book, but, um, so I'll do a quick flip through of this one. So this one, I took a combination of digital images, uh, store-bought papers, and my own handmade papers. This paper here is made from dyeing with avocado peels and seeds, and it turns the paper pink, and it, it's really kind of cool. It actually worked perfectly for this journal for the color. And then digital images, this image I got from the Artie Mays site. Great place. She's got some awesome digital images on her site. The way a digital image works is it you go to the site. If you have a printer, you pay a little bit for the uh, images that they've already created for you. you. You download them and print them on your printer. That simple. I like it because you the store-bought papers, you get a pack. You get a pack of, I don't know. 
40 sheets maybe and there's always some papers in there that you're never going to use or you'll, you'll find another use for them somehow but they don't always work with everything or they're ugly and um so the cool thing about the digital images you get to look through what you're buying before you buy it and they're a lot less expensive than a whole pack of 40 papers so i'm going to continue flipping through i put in some blank paper some sketchbook paper uh, some coffee dyed papers and some tracing paper here or actually this one's onion skin onion skin i love the way that sounds I've got a flip out page as you can see i've created my own papers for the book, I've created tags for journaling. Uh, this is a decoupaged envelope and it's got some journaling cards in it. And I, I embellished this to make it look um, vintage -y. This is actually a vintage uh, earring, clip-on earring. This is a vintage tablecloth, crocheted tablecloth piece. Um, and as you can see, that that's the pink paper from avocado. I never would have thought that, but this is really cool. Uh, so I sewed some lace. So you could see there's like one section here. This section has been sewn into this piece of fabric back here and the fabric uh, permanently affixed to the book again. I sewed some lace onto the edges. Uh, here again is another cool vintage looking digital image from Artie Mays. More papers, more tags. Um, this is just kind of. Oh, here's a cool idea. I don't. I don't remember who I got this from, but they take a piece of paper, they fold it up, make it look like an envelope. But that's another place to do some journaling, and you fold it back up and you put it back in there. Again, some more uh, decoupaged envelopes and tuck spots. This is called a belly band. You'll hear a lot of terms, and until you somebody tells you what they are, you don't know. I could walk up to somebody and say what a belly band is, and they'll think it's like my elastic waistband. <laughs> um, this was given to me by a lady named Marion. It's a cool little uh, bookmark type thing. Some more pages. This page comes all the way out for journaling or putting photos or keepsakes, whatever you want to do. And these envelopes can be used to put little... Um, keepsakes as well and then all of my journals come with uh, remnants of the papers that I used in building the journal so you can add to it and make it your own so this is a junk journal that has been made from scratch with handmade papers in it so that's the difference there's this one uh, that's handmade and then there's an altered book where you're just altering the book basically basically but you do still take some of these pages out because you have to. If you left the original pages in here, like this has uh, probably a third of the pages taken out, you can see they get thick. They'll get, you know, they can get this thick and then they're not going to lay flat, you know, like a book should. So there's those. And the last one that I'm going to go over is the Traveler's Notebook you can see you can see traveler's notebooks i'm gonna go grab one real quick okay so there's a regular travels traveler's notebook and the idea is that you um it has an elastic around it. The basic traveler's notebooks have an elastic around them. And they come with the elastic on the inside. No pockets, anything like that. But there's inserts that you can buy pre-made. They look like cardboard, and I'll show you an example of that soon. Um, and you can. the idea is that you can add to it, and the elastic is going to hold all the stuff that you add. So uh, these are made out of leather or something like leather. Uh, Here's an example of one that I've made from heavy duty upholstery material. Some vintage uh, lace and some embellishments and some little stuff hanging from the uh, elastic band. And then my traveler's notebooks come with pockets on the inside. This is made out of some vintage lace and it's the same idea. 
Um, but the, the idea is this, that you take, these are called inserts, the sections, and these are either sewn or handmade. Uh, this is sewn with wax string. Uh, you can hand sewn with wax no. string. And uh, this one, I just do a mixture of papers and I put them in. The idea is once you finish a section, you can take it out, put it in another book, and then add a new section in. So you're continuously using the same notebook, but you're adding different sections to it and removing different sections. So um, this is my version of a traveler's notebook. This is one that has not been used. The one I have used this year looks like this. As you can see, they get chunkier as time goes on. I've been using this one I think about six months. And what I do is when I'm out and about traveling, if I'm visiting family, I will keep little um, remnants of the trip. Uh, this one I sewed a front pocket on with vintage lace and I also sewed a back pocket on with some vintage lace. Actually, that's uh, a window, part of a window, bottom part of a window, curtain. And I've got three sections in here. And then I also made a uh, pocket section on the inside out of a file folder. So that way I can hold different things from my trips. Uh, these are business cards from an art studio that I went to, some extra washi tape, um, some little papers that I got. Um, this, oh, this is an example, too, of uh, the paper that comes from Artie Mays. Uh, another, she's got a whole mushroom nature thing going on one of them. This is also another one of her papers. Um, so I have, so I'm saving, I did Artist for a Day with my granddaughter. I've got a little envelope in there that I'll probably use for something. And I'll make little collages or I'll just put little things in there. Uh, this is a trip from my youngest granddaughter, we went to the zoo, and I just made some notes about about um, the trip, and I did some collaging about the trip. I also keep things in here like pretty papers. A friend of mine sent me a, a things I like to look at, and I love this paper. It came from it was wrapped, I guess, in like a lush bath bomb wrapping, and my friend Mary sent this to me, so I stuck it in my book. This paper came from Nick the Booksmith, and I just think that's beautiful. My husband sent me roses, so I put that little thing in here. This is an example right here of what you can purchase for the plain um, traveler's notebook. Um, it's also sometimes referred to as a bullet journal or a bujo or a Midori style journal. Um, but this is what the stuff looks like that comes with it. It's, you can either get like blank paper, grid paper, or dot paper, and that's it. Um, uh, I try to make my bullet journals with several, with three signatures and a writing board and pockets on the inside. Uh, this is my writing board that I had that I made just for mine to keep track of some things but I'll just do a quick flip through this too uh, again I've put some things in here uh, for something I did with my granddaughter uh, some more of that paper I didn't like I put black paper in here and then I did this while I was on the plane one day and I didn't really like it I mean I, it was fun doing the doodling but I'm not a fan of black paper either so um, I covered this so I'm going to do some kind of Christmas collage on it uh, I found this tissue paper and something that I purchased or received, so I put a little bit of that. I'll collage around that with some different things. Uh, this is this was handy. Uh, I decorated it for my book. Here's the back page of that Nick the Booksmith paper. Here's some collaging that I've done and some journaling that I've done. Uh, this was also a pocket out of that file folder. Here's the next signature that I made. Here's a journal page I made uh, from a fall trip. Here's another trip at a craft show. You can keep track of stuff that you do. And um, I know this was, <laughs> they kind of gave me some cool ephemera too. There's a bunch of coat checks that they gave me. So that was nice. Um, but I do a little bit of collage. I like texture. 
I like to feel the lace. I like to feel the muslin that's got the little frayed edges. I like all of that stuff. And right, I, I have to tell you, this is kind of my favorite color scheme right now. Purple, mauve, and blue. I'm My next project for myself is going to be made out of these colors. I absolutely love it. And maybe this green. Um, so it's this is kind of a collage and journaling. Here's where I've been. Here's some more cool paper my friend Mary gave me. Um, yeah, this is, whoops, that's, ooh, that's, a uh, an order I have that I'm working on for a book. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's my personal traveler's notebook. Um, and then art journals, I make the art journals. Oh, here, <laughs> this is one of my first travel books but uh that I made for myself that I um that started out as an art journal or it was going to be an art journal that I was going to put uh stuff in and paint in but I decided I was going to make it more like this one with collaging and journaling and I use this book actually my granddaughter and I take turns writing in it writing things to each other little things that she does I'll put in here places we've been um, snap, uh, snap, Snapchat photos. Here's, here she is. That's her, her walking away. Sad. Um, but all I did on this one, this was more of an altered book, but it was a combination of a junk journal, altered book, and a traveler's notebook. It, I like this better because you can stretch it out and then you can add and remove from it. This one was an altered book that I cannot remove anything, nor can I add anything. So, um, I'll keep information here are stuff in these like here's her hearts here's my hearts uh we're constantly she's got a journal just like this and we'll write each other secret notes like she wrote some notes in here um lit, write secret notes in each other's journals and uh this is a art show i did just kind of cool stuff i mean i've got some pockets in here for journaling that i've made some little tabs i've made this is kind of my first one, a, a testing book of things I've done. This is the best bakery in the planet, right here. It's in Ohio, in Cleveland, Ohio, outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Oh my gosh, that bakery is the best. Uh, this is my granddaughter's friends, my granddaughter. More Marigold Festival stuff. See, she'll make me a little stuff, stick it in there, and then I can see it when she's not here. She lives farther away than I like. Uh, she left me a secret note there, and um, so I'll open up my journal later, and I'll find a secret note from her, and that's totally awesome. Uh, my younger granddaughter doesn't do that yet, because she's only two, but uh, this is another collage that I did. Just I didn't do very little writing, but uh took little pieces from what I did and glued them in the book. I guess this is more, but I have a feeling it's like this. You just glue a bunch of stuff down. A little uh, book jewelry danglies jewelry book danglies everybody calls them different things uh they're really cool to have on books um they just are uh here's a trip to savannah we took i did some gluing down of items that we had i made a little journaling spot here here's another card little book that my granddaughter made me and oh this was a trip to uh a Christmas place called Bronner's in Michigan and uh, here's my nephew and my granddaughter seeing Santa and that's it I these are some belly bands here holding miscellaneous papers that I can use later uh, to add to this book but those are some examples of the different journals you can have you can decorate them how you want you can take a book use the existing book if you don't want to spend the money on a new journal if you don't want to go out and buy the papers and make your own journal this is a great way to start out you can you can paint right on these pages you can collage on these pages if you do paint on a page from an existing book you're going to want to put gesso down first or glue some paper on top of it that you can write on and like if you want to do incorporate watercolor paper into your book you could do that but i just want to give you a quick rundown of the differences between a traveler's notebook a altered book, a junk journal, also known as handmade journal or heirloom journal, and um, 
art journals. Uh, like I said, art journals I do for myself. And uh, they're my favorite thing. I actually love doing it all. I can't just do this because I want to do other things. And one of the best things that I have ever experienced is watching a child pick up one of my books and just the their face light up. Or if somebody purchases one of my traveler's notebooks and they, they tell me how much they love it and it's wonderful. I love that. I really, I just, it, it really makes my ha me happy. You'd have to ask my husband, but um, I, it really makes me happy to make other people happy. And this has brought a lot of happiness to me. I want to thank Marta Lepkowska, uh, Andrea Allen from Artie Mays, Mary Small Art, that's Marta's. Um, Nick the Booksmith has had some um, interesting things. Roxy Creations is, has great ideas. Um, there's uh, Cat Hand is another art journal person. She has some great ideas. Um, try it out. It's amazing. It's relaxing and it's de-stressing. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little video and hopefully you'll pick up a book and start to journal in some way. Thank you so much. If you like this, please hit like and please subscribe to my page for future videos. Thank you. Bye.